Hi, I'm Sarah Kalnais, and this is Skylar. Welcome to the language of dogs. First, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a certified dog behavior consultant and a certified pet dog trainer who's been working with dogs professionally for about 10 years. I've been involved with animals in one way or another for my entire life, as my father invented the original pooper scooper in 1957. So in a way, you could say I was destined. How did I get involved in the language of dogs, and what exactly is it? Well, a few years ago, I was doing some research through the University of Hawaii with dolphins. And all I could remember about dolphins was what I'd seen on television with Flipper, and how Flipper used to spend all of his time in the introduction going, and me thinking that was so cute. When I got to the lab, I was told by the other people who worked there that that, in fact, was aggressive behavior. Well, that got me thinking. Dogs show us the same things. They certainly show us when they're being aggressive, and some of that people are really fantastic at recognizing. It's hard to miss. But they do a lot of more subtle things, things that let you know early on that they're not feeling comfortable, they're stressed, they're anxious, they'd like you to go a little bit further away, or they'd like you to come closer, or even that they'd like you to play. But most of the time, we don't recognize the signals. So our dogs are begging for us to understand, play with me, play with me, or please go away from me. And we just don't get it. So I put together a seminar to help people understand what exactly is the language of dogs. What is your dog trying to tell you? What can you do with the information? And how can it help you change your dog's behavior for the better? That's what you are about to learn in the language of dogs. Why is it important? The dog's innate ability to signal is easily lost or reinforced through life's experience. If we study the signals dogs use with each other and use them ourselves, we increase our ability to be able to communicate with dogs. So basically, if we know how to communicate with them, we can increase the behaviors that we want and decrease those that we don't want. Things like jumping up, okay? If we know how dogs communicate with each other, I don't want you to jump up on me anymore, then we have a better chance of being able to communicate with our dog how we don't want them to jump up on us anymore, okay? All right, so first I'm gonna put you to sleep. This is yawning, this is, these are signals of stress. So if you've ever noticed your dog in the car yawning, uh, you take them out yawning. Now of course, keep in mind everything is in context. Oh, oh, there you go, oh, big licking. Oh, I just really wanted to put you to sleep there. Um, so, <laughs> oh. So I'm doing something invasive, the dog yawns. Okay? Now I have to wake you up again. Okay? <laughs> so, pause for a second. Obviously, this only applies to male dogs. Um, I did have someone ask that question once. So, only applies to males. They have the equipment. Um, often happens around food, so a lot of the examples you will see are around food or a resource. But if you, if you went out and looked at a dog, you know, I don't have dog park footage as of yet. If you went around to a dog park, you would see a lot, a lot of penis crowning. And it is a sign of stress. And stress is an arousal level, okay? Th there are different levels of arousal. And arousal is a sequence that leads up to aggression. Arousal is close to aggression. The um, human psych psychologists and psychiatrists say that, s that sex between humans is a form of aggression. Um, and so, so, so they say, so just FYI, to go tell your friends. Um, but, but arousal and aggression are very, are very, very close together. So when you see increasing arousal levels, that's important to note because that means you're getting closer and closer and closer to aggression. And these are lower level, but if you look for, nothing happens in a vacuum, and when you see lots of these signals happening together, which in a lot of these clips you'll see, ooh, well, we saw yawning earlier, and now we're seeing yawning and something else here, 
because I, I can't isolate them all because they all, many of them happen together, okay? So, PG-13, go. Okay, so food, okay. Um, and ooh, Oh, I don't have my laser pointer. I love it when I have my laser pointer. And then I can just, it's right here. Um, Puppies will do it. Um, this guy can't even kind of walk. He gets so thrown off balance once he comes <laughs> I don't know if there's a resource here or something going on, but yeah, there's a, there's a pig ear, okay? This is, um, <laughs> Nice. Is it a boxer? I, I missed the, because um, all we're looking at is one particular part of the dog here. Um, but these are just interactions that, that that last one didn't have anything to do with food. So it doesn't always have to do with food. It can be proximity to a person, proximity to another dog. Um, it's in the fur there somewhere. Some breeds are harder to see than others. There is no female equivalent. Um, to this behavior, it only, I mean, well, there may be a, a pheromonal thing. Okay, so teeth chattering. Uh, teeth chattering is a sign of arousal. It can also be a sign of frustration or a sign of aggression, but it's not necessarily a sign of aggression. You have to look at the rest of the dog's body. As you can see in these examples, the dog's ears are back, the, the body is soft, but you're seeing the teeth chattering behavior. Um, a lot of times dogs will display this behavior when they're excited about being ready to play, if you're playing ball with them. Um, but it can also be that they're stressed or aroused, and you will see it quite often in a kennel situation, as in these shots here. Sweaty paws. Um, often hard to see, but you can always feel it, like just if your palms are sweaty. This was a perfectly dry day in the middle of the summer, as you can tell, but I'm wearing by what I'm wearing. Now you're also seeing a lot of other things with this dog, right? But look at the footprints. Full footprints on the pavement. I just lifted up the paw and you can see the entire footprint, okay? Sweaty paw, the dog is stressed. This is actually, I think, at mounds. Um, and it's a little hard to see with the light in here, but you can see, see the trail of footprints that he's leaving. Um, can anybody see it? Lip licking. Um, lip licking is another, keep going, is another sign of stress that dogs will show. Um, it's different than if they're just um, licking their lips, you know, if you, they see food, they might lick their lips once. But when you see this, it happens repetitively and usually after something, in, a lot of times if you watch this video, you're gonna see something invasive happen. So here the dog's paws are being handled and they lick their lips. Licking lips again, being handled. Notice also the ears are back. There's other things going on. None of these signals appear in a vacuum. This is a little Scotty licking his lips. There's also something called tongue flicking, which looks different, and you'll see examples of that. This is little Mikey. So again, lick licking, lick licking, <laughs> lip licking. Everybody say that three times fast. Lip licking, lip licking, lip licking. Um, I want you guys to start noticing as we build the seg the segments. Um, you know, and making note. What else are you seeing? <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> now there's a face you could love. So the eyes are huge, right? They're huge and bugging out. The dog is blinking, which is another one we're going to come to, and the lip licking. Stress vocalizations can be varied. Um, whining. Go ahead. And I'm not going to talk a lot through this so you can hear. Now there's about three distinct different stress vocalizations going on and there's, what are you guys picking up on? That, that high-pitched whining. There's also a sound that's going that's separate from the whine. That's a stress vocalization. And then there's also this dry, heavy pant. You're going to see, and I'm sure you'll see other examples, where there's this, there's this sort of happy pant, tongue, lolling kind of like 
it's 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 like raspier and just like you know the big happy <laughs> you know the the stress pant is a dry sort of a shallow <laughs> you can see their their if you watch their chest it's a it's an increased respiration rate and it sounds dry it, it just doesn't, and nothing about the dog seems relaxed. So again, if you played, if I had my back turned and you just played a bunch of pants, if I can't see the rest of the dog, I don't know what my success rate on, would, would be saying that's a, that's, I, I mean, I probably could tell in some cases like this, but many would be more gray area, and you need to look at the rest of the dog. So um, it's not like, you know, I can hear something, although at dog parks, oftentimes, you know, you'll hear a bark that's definitely a, I mean, business go away bark across the, bark, across the park, and I'm, I'm suddenly like, what's going on over there? What's going on over there? What's going on over there? So um, knowing these things, one thing I would caution you is, you know, people tend to leave this particular part of the seminar and then go home and everything is, str oh my god, that dog is stressed. Oh my gosh, that dog's going to bite somebody. Oh look, that was a freeze. Um, and you're going to see the things everywhere because you're gonna, now you've just seen them and you're looking for them. But you, they happen in, in, look at the context, look at, are they, is just, did the dog just yawn once? Okay, because you know, one thing you can do is you can yawn at their, your dog and they'll yawn back, just like you know, somebody starts yawning and is, now don't everybody start yawning. Somebody yawns, somebody else yawns, they do the same thing. Um, who knows why? They do it. Okay. Have any of these been positive stressors that we've seen to this point? I mean, some of it was just petting and it, it didn't look overly stressful in terms of a negative stress. So... It, I think stress, I mean, that's a good point because stress can be good and stress can be bad. I mean, a, a certain amount of stress is a good thing. If I didn't have the stress of the deadline of this morning, um, I would have happily gone, it's 70 degrees out, I'm going to the dog park, you know, to hang out. Instead, I sat inside and edited videos because I was stressed, okay? But, um, so, so just because a dog is showing stress, and that's why these are the lowest level, this is the beginning level. These signs of stress, if you take in context, okay, the dog is at the groomers, they're at the vet, they, there's new people in our household today, and they're showing signs of stress, it's not a cause for alarm. Okay. In many of these examples, it's in the context of them being tested either by a rescue or in a shelter. And in that environment, they are stressed and probably not in a good way. Okay. But absolutely, you will notice this, this first segment where, where we're just on signs of stress, and I'll tell you when we switched over because it gets a little bit confusing, um, that, that these cases are, are mostly negative because they're being... They're, they're just because of the environment they're in and because we are stressing them to see what the outcome will be. Okay? Dry pant? Did you hear that? There's that dog. Now this dog is going to sound like we're killing her when we do what's called a muzzle you. When you, we're not pinching or anything, it's a it's part of the behavior assessment. But look at the rest of her body. I mean, I think that you guys would know just from listening to these sounds, it's not a happy camper dog. Now, if you pause for just one second. Look at the, the tail, and we're going to get to the tail. I want you to notice tails in a lot of these because people go, ooh, look at that. It's just waving the tail. That dog's totally comfortable. In many cases, the tail means absolutely nothing. I mean, absolutely nothing. I think one of the greatest dis, you know, disservices we've done to children historically in society is say, well, if the dog's tail is wagging, if it's, if he's, like, it's up high and wagging, <laughs> He's saying, pet me, pet me, pet me. And more likely he's going, I'm going to bite you, I'm going to bite you, I'm going to bite you, um, if it's high up. So always watch their entire body. We're not doing anything to her. <laughs> That's submissive licking, which you'll see coming up. Oh, 
it makes me feel horrible every time I see it because I'm really not doing anything that's hurting the dog at all. There's an introduction of another signal there that's a, it's, um, sometimes it's just called a chuff uh, in a boxer. They're all lips, it comes out of <laughs> I'm going to spit all over the people in the front row if I keep doing that. Um, but chuffing, chuffing and cheek puffing is another stress vocalization. So they'll do, it. do you guys ever see that they, they'll puff out their cheeks and they'll just be little like... I thought he was going to pee on me there for a second. <laughs> Which does happen occasionally. Oh, there's Mikey again. Do you hear that high? <laughs> okay. Dilated pupils, um, in the context of what light the dog is in. In a darker room, if you guys looked at each other now, your pupils are going to be a little more dilated than if we step outside and suddenly go, whoa. It's for the context. And these examples, um, we are in well-lit areas and the dog's pupils are way too large for, I mean, this is a completely overhead fluorescent lit room. Uh, Huge. Uh, I think, yes. There's a little Havanese. This is Max, a.k.a. Ja Jackson, a.k.a. Max. What is he now? He's Jackson. He's Jackson now. Those dogs all still had soft eyes. That's why they weren't put in a different category. Those dogs all went like, they were just, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you weren't afraid of any of those dogs, were you, in those clips? It wasn't like, alarm, alarm, go away, go away. Um, but their pupils were big, so that's what you're taking note of. Now, their pupils can be big and other things can be happening at the same time. If a whale eye happens, generally, and it's seeing the white of the eye, it's going, you're seeing the white of the eye, um, generally followed by a bite. This is always, usually, usually followed by a bite. See the white of the eye? Bite! Sorry, there, see the white of the eye? This is a, this is a, I, I'm very, very stressed. We're ramping up the stress here. I'm very, very stressed. And this is also a, um, a distance increasing signal. So some of these fall into two categories. Um, whites of the eyes, okay. White, there's Mikey. Oh, he's really nice, isn't he? Yeah, he's trying so hard to warn you. See the whites of the eyes? And, and you get good at seeing it from all angles, okay. You can see it from the side. You can see it from the top. Please understand that these signals happen, you know, again, the, like one on top of the other. Those dogs all had dilated pupils, but they also were popping out the whites of their eyes. Okay, if the dog won't eat, this is a first signal that makes me know that they are not comfortable. Um, and I increase those little post-it notes in my mind that something wrong, that something is wrong if the dog won't eat. Now, in these clips, if you look at the rest of what's going on, the dogs don't look real relaxed and happy, do they? But they're not eating. Um, and that is, a sign, that is a sign of stress. And it is a, it is a I, I am much more comfortable working with any dog than I'm meeting if they are eating, if they're willing to eat, OK? Urination. And this is not as in marking urination. This is a, as in what people tend to think of as submissive urination. And this whole time right now, he's peeing. So he's standing there peeing because an umbrella has been opened near him. He's peeing that whole time. Um, and probably trembling a little bit too. I didn't flip that dog over. This dog flipped over and is squirting out. Oh, yeah. You see, squirt, 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 squirt. Okay? So um, we're going to be looking at a behavior called tap outs later and that's you saw that with the squirting out. Okay, ears pinned back, the whole bunny ears look, is sign of, another sign of stress. 
Let's put these are so and again you have to pay attention to the breed. Harder to tell with goldens, with labs, with but do you see this? <laughs> you can tell when when you know, I mean, here's a lab mix. Um, ears pinned back. Mikey is a good example of a lot of things. <laughs> There's a border collie with the ears pinned back. Okay. So whether they're floppy-eared or whether they're prick-eared, you can tell when they put their ears back. Freezes. These are very hard to get on video, so I'll try and point to you the moment of the freeze, but just watch really carefully because all, usually they close their mouth. So see if you can mark it. His ears are pinned back, right? Yeah. He's, he's, respiration is increased. Right there. Okay, and it's just, it's just that fraction of a second, tail down, you know, there's lots of things that you can see. And it's in the jaw? Um, it's, it's in the whole, the whole demeanor. He'll do it again. Okay, so that one came with the growl. The freeze doesn't generally happen with the growl, but it's, it's, you, you see it mostly in their head, but really their whole body sort of stops for just an instant. It's like, this is a behavior hard to show on video because you feel it. Has anybody, you feel it when a dog freezes. You're gonna see one coming up where I'm holding onto the dog's tail and I let go real fast there was a freeze because a freeze like a whale eye is like one of those final things that they give you that's a warning I'll bite you just keep it up I mean they're trying desperately so we're ramping up as we go through these we're ramping up and up and up the, the level of stress is okay. it usually that hard kind of stare that goes with it? I mean, yeah, they don't look happy and soft when they do a freeze they never look happy and soft and literally if you get a fr if you're working with a dog and they freeze or they whale eye you you get this like <laughs> feeling the, mm -hmm. the hair goes up on the back of your neck I mean you just you just you you'll know believe me you'll know it, it because it's not like they're being, you know, sometimes they can be waggy, 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 and, and Jekyll and Hyde you, which I have an example of later. Um, but oftentimes, I mean, you're doing something anywhere, you're in their space, and all of a sudden, and usually they do close their mouth, though, and they, they almost hold their breath. It's like, hold their breath, and their eyes get very still, and everything just stops, just for a flicker of a, of a moment. Go ahead. Oh, See that? And then they go again. It's like somebody hit pause. Okay. There. I was like, okay, I got it. I'll let you go. See, stillness, just stillness. And this is hard to see. The, do the dog's eyes got very hard. Oh, there was a little... Yeah, everything just... Right there was one. And they can look very... There's another one. They can look very small. They're very, very... They're very quick. Pacing, um, people go, yeah, but dogs walk around all the time. They, they, not like this, they don't. <laughs> oh, oh, where am I going? Oh my goodness, where am I going? Where am I going? Um, it's, it's unusual when they're in a small space and they, they look uncomfortable. This is a wolf hybrid. Hear the respiration, that dry panting. He's pacing. There's a shake off, which we're going to see later. Do the dog is not comfortable. Slower little movement. Um, a calm, happy dog tends to move their body when they're awake. This is a Havanese. Um, it's like a stuffed animal. It's not moving. <laughs> um, this dog is. This is an Amstaff. But it's not necessarily, he's not stiff, right? He's just not moving very much. Um, I'm interacting. You're also seeing lip, lip licks, right? I still can't say that. Um, his pupils are dilated. So again, as we go on, keep looking for those other signals that you're seeing. But I'm hugging the, he's not leaning into the dog. He's not trying to get away from the hug. He's just there, not stiff, not scary. 
but so one of the things you need to look for is lack of behavior. Lack of behavior is in itself behavior. Okay. Um, here's a Dalmatian. There's not much movement. That wasn't a freeze. I mean, the dog was still eyes moving. Okay, but not much movement. Um, tucked or low tail. I think we all know to look for this one. It's one of the only things with a tail that means anything. <laughs> When a Dalmatian's tail is completely tucked under its body, you know there's something going on, okay? Um, and again, this is where you do look at the breed and what's normal for the breed. An Akita is a spitz breed. That tail should be normally up and curled over the back. There's our lab mix. The American Eskimo should spitz breed. Tail should be up and curled. It's straight down. So while it's not tucked below the body, that's extreme for that breed. A beagle, it's very odd to see a beagle with their tail straight down. Okay? And this is a GSP. Yeah. Um, stiff posture and excessive shedding. A little hard to show shedding on a video, but I did actually. If you look really closely, you can see it. But so, okay, this is different than not, the not moving. Do you see? He's stiff. It's not, he is moving, but he's stiff. And look at, the, you can see the hair fly booting. <laughs> They're shedding like crazy. Who of you, keep, keep letting it play, who of you takes your dog to the vet and they shed a whole lot all of a sudden? <laughs> Sign of stress, okay. This is Pandora who spent a month behind a chair at my house. Oh, I wish you could see this. You can sort of see her. She's a hound mix. That, there, see the, it's shedding. I got it on tape. It's there. And I had to zoom in on it just to prove. But you guys know this. I mean, it happens when, they're, when they go to the vet often. People see it. Stretching, I only have one example of this. It's hard to get in a, in a stretch. Dogs stretch a lot for other reasons. But if they're doing it as part of a sequence, um, it can be a signal of stress. Okay, so again, that one always happens in a sequence. Trembling. So please don't go home, see your dog stretch and go, oh my gosh. This is, he's now Jackson. Look at him shake. I don't even need to show you that. Pupillary dilation, ears pinned back, tail straight down. Are you getting that we don't see these in a vacuum? Okay. This is Pandy, the dog that spent a month behind my chair. Trembling, pupillary dilation. <laughs> Muscle ridges around eyes and mouth. This is a very difficult one to get on video, but I think I've got a couple of examples that you may be able to see without my, look up right above the eyes here, this area, and you also want to look by the, by the sides of the mouth. This right here? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so you're going to look up at this area and you're going to look at this area on these clips. See above the eyes now? You can see that little ridge. Here you can see it by the, by the mouth. Can you guys see it? This is a hard one to see, and I mean, it's not, it's, you, again, it ha this one always happens with a lot of other stuff going on. Ears pinned back, tail up and high. So she's fine, now you can see the ridges start to develop, okay? See them? Yeah. Side of the face, no. Um, urogenital checkout, this is one um, that as I, I literally six, I've got like 600 plus hours of video of, of assessments of one type or another with dogs. And as I was reviewing all of these, and this is over a span of like three years, okay? And, and periodically I review all the new tape that I've got. And as I was re reviewing a big chunk, I noticed that whether they were male or female or intact or not, um, during, when, they, when, when you would get into their space or when you were doing something invasive, the dogs would always like go, do I still have it? Is it down there? You know, and nobody had ever really pointed this out before. And you just kind of go, oh, well, they're, you know, they just have to stop and lick because they can, right? Um, 
but it's not. You, you stress them, and they go, uh-huh, is it there? Okay, okay, yep, still, oops, still there, it's there, okay, good. Whew. What's she doing? Uh, she's got my leg, I think I'll just sniff. <laughs> All I'm doing is playing with the dog, they check it out. Hmm, is it there? That's a female. This is a female, obviously. Uh, hmm, what's back there? <laughs> Just let me take a moment. Oh, oh, a little stressed by that other dog, so I think I'll check it out. She's holding my paw. Well, what can I do? Hmm, let's have a lick. Excessive salivation. This is kind of funny. Big old Rottweiler, little drool, okay? And it's a bubble. <laughs> I really wanted to pop this so badly. So the, then the bubble starts to drool. I'm like, come on, pop, pop. There, bubble drool. There can she, bubble with the drool. This is, this is real time. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't cut the clip. I was like, I really should cut the clip, but no, no, he was just sitting there. Oh, bubble finally popped, drool still hanging there, okay? So it's hard to get excessive salivation, but you know it when it's happening. You get slobbed every time you get them a treat. Shallow or fast breathing, holding their breath in a non-freeze sort of way. And I think we've seen a lot of examples of this already. Okay, now why is this not happy, happy, happy? Because the ears are pinned back, it's a little bit dry and raspy, and the rest of the dog is not waggy. With that example, do you see what I'm saying? The tongue was hanging out, and, and that's, that's one of those where if I was just listening to the sound, I might not be able to tell, but it's a little bit dry. But the, you have to look at the rest of the dog. The ears were back, the dog was stiff, the pupils were dilated, it wasn't a great shot. But that was, n that was a, a definitely, um, and the, that's a high respiration rate <laughs> for a relaxed dog. It, that would not be a relaxed dog. Calming signals are, and it may have a slide that follows this that says what they are, but basically they're signals of non-aggressive intent. Okay? So when dogs do this, when dogs show you a calming signal, they're basically trying to tell you, I mean you no harm. Spock, right? Is this the Spock thing? Mm -hmm. And they expect, because if you're a dog, you would do it, you would return, okay? If I say, you know, if you and I got in a fight and I say, I'm very sorry, you'd probably say, I'm sorry too, okay? Or maybe you wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I wouldn't, I don't know. But, um, but it's, it's expected that a, a calming signal would be given and would be returned. Except for we don't recognize them, so we don't return them. So you will see video of them being offered and in some cases returned by me or returned by another dog. And if you watch your dogs, you'll see offer and return. Um, some dogs will not do it. Some dogs are not good communicators. They have social deficits, um, genetic deficits. They've never been around other dogs. Some of this is, 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 in, is bo they're born with it. It's there. It's in their <coughs> genetic coding and some of it they learn. So some dogs are better communicator th better communicators than others. Okay, so lookaways. Um, and it isn't just the dog is looking the other direction. They actively, okay, so these are two dogs. Stand off. This one's like, oh, nope, I'm not going to fight you. Mean you no harm. Okay. Um, this border collie, no, ha, ha, sorry. I'm trying to get him to make eye contact. No, a no. Okay, so that's a look away. Um, automatically, this was the camera. Um, they, not only will the dog not eat, but I'm not even going to look. I, I, I don't even see you there. Okay, it's an active turn of the head. It is a cutoff signal to do a look away. So if you're sitting there and you keep your chin up and you turn your head, the dog, if they're a good communicator, will go off. They will leave you and go away. Really, they will. People are like, hmm? we have to go like this. No, that's play. Okay, that's going to get them to come in more to do this. And they will 
and they will more often than not, if they're a decent communicator, go away. Okay, paw raises are one that you can, you can try and use, and some people have success with this. There are lots of different paw raises. So here's the paw raises offered by the Dalmatian, and that's my dog, Laika, and Laika gives one back. Isn't that just sweet? Um, and notice, even though the, the puppy's trying to get up towards me, little paw raise, it's a little, I'm limp. And then he gives me a submissive lick, and I'm licking my lips in that footage. This is the Border Collie. And I'm like, look, he's doing a paw raise. There's, they can do it standing, they can do it sitting. This cocker's like, get her away from me. <laughs> that was a little Havanese standing paw raise. Or is this a Lao Chen? Not sure. Anybody, can anybody tell the difference between a Havanese and a Lao Chen? Okay. Um, there's a standing, you know, head lowered. Oh, Max. Now that was not a paw raise. That is that same dog doing a paw raise. Okay, do you see the difference? Now this, you know, this, he paused. Do you, do you want to back up and see that one again? The not a paw raise versus a paw raise? So with the husky, that one, that's a ritualized behavior pattern. That is a paw raise. Okay, um, and we're, we're going to talk about those, but those are basically, it's, it's just basically something the dog has been reinforced for in the past, um, and so they, they, they just tend, it's something that works for them, and if it works for you, you keep doing it, so the dog thinks, oh, when I do this, so maybe, you know, it's like how dogs will, sometimes it, the shaking behavior, they'll just put their paw up all the time, because it's something that worked for them, to, it got them good stuff, so, and it went way up high, now this I'm going to explain this a little bit. This is my dog, Leica, who's like 12 when this is taken. And this GSP, German Short Hair Pointer, adolescent male. So Leica is trying like crazy here to get this adolescent, adolescents don't communicate real well, to go away. And he's not, and he's not doing it. So the dog <laughs> is just staying in Leica's space. Aren't they just cute when they do that? <laughs> okay, sniffing. Obviously, dogs sniff a lot. Forever. If you're throwing treats all over the floor, that's probably why the dog is sniffing. This usually comes in context with other behaviors. Go ahead. So we're in the middle of doing an assessment, and suddenly the dog just starts sniffing when they've already been in the room for 10 minutes and they haven't been sniffing why are they suddenly sniffing the same spot they've been standing in, okay? That's, that's one of the reasons that you can tell when you're doing it, that they're not, um, they're not, so, you know, we're, this is, this is robo-rat. I urge everybody to get a robo-rat. It's a really good, Mikey's like, hmm. So sniff, sniff, sniff. Sneezing, this is fun. So we've got sound here. I'd like to make a little montage of, of this, but, it's not always because they have something up their nose. It can be because, in, and generally sneezing is part of a sequence. <laughs> you could see like it was sneeze, shake off, sneeze, other things. Do you know what the other meaning of a sneeze is with a dog? What it can be? I mean, obviously it can mean they have something up their nose or they have a cold or whatever. They actually, dogs don't sneeze that much because they've got something up their nose. When you, if you really pay attention, they really, you know, they sniff a whole lot and don't sneeze very much. Um, has, have any of you ever played with your dog? You've been playing something with your dog and your dog starts sneezing? Or if they roll over. Yeah, they, if they are sneezing, they, tch, 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 they love what you're doing. They are having a very good time. And so if you're playing with your dog, and your dog starts to you know, sneeze, you know, and usually it'll be like bow sneeze, bow sneeze. They get really excited, so it's excitement, and they're en and they're enjoying what you're doing. Okay, scratching again in context. Go ahead, or out of context as the case may be. So you know, we, I'm looking at their teeth or touching their paw or whatever, and suddenly they have to scratch. Um, da -da 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 -da. 
<laughs> and what you do, again, and we're going to show sequences, stress sequences at the end of, um, of uh, one of these sections. And what you'll see is that they all happen in a row. Many of them will happen in a row together. Blinking is hard to get on video, but we all know what blinking looks like, right? Um, blinking is a calming signal. Um, blink, blink, and you can really tell well with him. Um, Max was afraid of men, um, and he's blinking at Andrew to calm him down. Now, we don't know exactly, you can keep going, we don't know whether it is the dog is doing the calming signals to calm. I don't know why there's sound there. This is Drooly Rot, and he's blinking too, if you can see it. We don't know whether they use these to calm themselves down or to or to calm other, or, or to calm you down, to calm the environment down. That, that's an unknown thing. All these behaviors? They don't these, ca these calming, this, this section that's calming signals. So we're not sure whether they're trying to communicate to you, whether it's totally for external purposes or whether it's actually calming themselves down, okay? But, or whether it's both. And my hunch is, because they're given and offered that there must be some external reason or they wouldn't be you know, offered and then returned. Um, but it may also have some internal, you know, like there are certain things that we do, you know, people will bite their fingernails and things that look external and it actually has some internal value for them as well. Shaking off, this is funny, every dog does this. Um, so, <laughs> and they all do it a little different. Some do it from like head to butt. It's a little puppy shake off. Ooh, that one had to shake off his feet. That's from the front to the back. Whole body. This is probably the most common calming signal that you will see. And I have not tried to do this with other people. I've not gone up and done the whole body shake. Um, oh. They can be very quick. They can, they can do them for a long time. Some dogs will do a bunch of shake-offs in a row. So I'm trying to look at his ears and he's like, oh, I'll shake you off. I shake you off. I shake you off. There's Mikey again. There. Ooh, ooh, really quick. Really quick shake. This is, who? Uh, that's a casein. Here's our Havanese. Oh, even the little ones do it. And a big Sammy. They'll do it with each other as well. That was because of the interaction. Other common signals, and remember I said some of these cross over, so you have to look at the context. And, and sometimes, you know, you won't know which it is, and you just have to know what they are. Yawning, lip and nose licking, these were also stress signals. Sitting or lying down, um, and can be crouching as well. Um, moving in an arc on approaches. Okay, so here's the sequences. So I, got, I want you guys to just kind of shout out what it is that you're seeing from what we've shown you so far. <coughs> Sniffing, lip licking, there's a shake off. That was a sneeze without scratching. There's another lip lick. Okay, this was shedding, yawn. There's the vocalization. Mm -hmm. Scratching. Big scratch. He's got a lot of scratch. He's actually sniffing there. <laughs> that, that was a tap out, which we'll get to. That's a, that was a your general check off, a shake off followed by your general check off. <laughs> There's some lip licking going on. Big 
the ears are back. Would that be a look away? The, yep, yeah, there's look aways in there. I'm sure there's pupillary dilation as well. Harder to see. Another scratch. Um, so, especially with like the sniffing, sneezing, scratching, urogenital checkout, um, uh, they tend to happen in a sequence. Okay? So, you see them right back to back to back. So, you know, you know it wasn't, there's your urogenital checkout, sniff. Um, I wasn't making this up. Um, there's a lip lick and a shake off and another urogenital <laughs> checkout. Little, uh, the little tail, there's a little tail, tail flick. He's kind of s stiff. That was like a little chuff. <laughs> Sneeze, shake off. There's a puppy. Yawn. Lip lick. Sniff. Oh, here, this is just the mother low. These you just get everything with him. So his tail is tucked, his eyes are dilated, his ears are back. Paw raise, lip lick, look away. That's a very clear look away with a urogenital checkout. More lip lick, another big paw raise with trembling. I mean, he basically went, you need something for your video? Here, let me give it to you. <laughs> you want them to really believe it happens in a sequence? Now this is me giving him calming signals, okay? So I did some yawning and some lip licking. Yawning, lip licking, and blinking are three big ones that you can do. And he's just paw raise, paw raise, paw raise. But he starts to eat. Another urogenital checkout. Ears are staying back. And I'm calming signal, calming signal, calming signal. And he comes up towards me for the first time. What were the three big ones you said? Yawning. Outside of a kennel, yawning, lip licking, and blinking. Um, and sometimes, although I don't know whether it does much good, I raise, you'll see me raise a hand, like a, like a paw. Um, but blinking, okay, so it's, it's all there. But you can see that I've, he's, he's giving a ton. I give him some responses, he comes closer and starts eating. So do you see what I'm saying? Look for the sequences, and there are big ones that tend to happen in a sequence, and they're the ones that people are most worried about. Well, if they're, what if, if they're sniffing, how can I tell? If they're sneezing, how can I tell? If they're yawning, how can I tell? Those are big ones that happen in a sequence, just over and over. You'll see it with dogs, and so if you're watching for that sequence, it will be clear. You won't have to go, ooh, he sniffed. Was it? Wasn't it? Because it just won't happen alone. Okay, distance increasing signals are those signals that the dog is telling you, um, back off, I would like to increase social distance. Um, these signals are used to gain social distance. Knowing how to read these signals can prevent you, your volunteers, your staff from being bitten. Um, when working to modify aggression, when we talk about behavior modification, you have to intervene as soon as you see these signals, the, the, the lowest level that you're seeing, before the escalation of the behavior occurs. But not only that, when you're working behavior modification, we're going to talk about sub-threshold. The dog needs to be sub-threshold, meaning if they've triggered onto these distance-increasing behavior, behaviors, like you have a dog that chases bikes, for example, okay, or joggers. So they're like, la, 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 and they pull at the leash, and they do the whole distance-increasing barking thing, and they lunge and all of that. Well, once they've done that, you can't go, oh, here's some hot dog. I mean, they're thoroughly into, you know, jog or kill mode. Um, and so you, you have to make sure that you can read the stress signals and the other signals we've already gone over so that you know that the dog is getting uncomfortable and you can read that they're getting up to the point at which they're getting close to this threshold at which they're going to give these distance increasing aggressive forward behaviors and you have to intervene before that or you're not modifying the behavior. Marking territory. This is just, there's just so many fun ways in which they do this. If you're ever at my house and you try and pee, this is what happens. Hey! Hey, uh. <laughs> I'm going to eat my food, I'm eating my food, I'm eating my food, I'm eating my food. What is that? Wagon train, wagon train, wagon train. <laughs> but I'm not going to eat all my food. 
Just in case I want some later. And that's basically nobody else touched that. Yep, that's mine. Mine, mine, mine. Oops. I think I would like this very small room, so I will pee here. Hmm, let me smell it. No, I don't think so. I've got more pee than you do. Na, 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 na. And then they just go about their business. Oh, is it still there? Yes, I still have more pee than you do. I win. He's sniffing where another dog has been, not peed. And and he's just going to leave a whole trail. <laughs> now this one, that's a secondary tester who's neutral. Uh, mine. <laughs> that was that. Oh, was that hot? Okay. Oh, yep, okay. I'll pee where I shed even. <laughs> There's a wall. I'll just pee. These dogs do not have to pee. Dogs always leave urine in their bladders. They never empty completely. They always... Pause for a second. They always make sure they have some left. Okay, hard eyes. When you get hard eyes, you will know. This does not look like, oh, pet me, play with me eyes, okay? What it really is, is do you see how you can see the sharp delineation between the pupil and the iris? It's a very, very sharp line. That's actually physiologically what it is. It's a sharp distinction. Normally, it's a little fuzzy. If you look at your dog, this, you can't just see a sharp line. Hard eyes. Go ahead. That's a back off, lady. You're holding my mouth and I don't want you to. I really wasn't being as mean as that video clip looks. That's the dog who, okay, so you see the muscle ridges and the hard eyes. Here's Mikey. Okay, if that wasn't back off, I don't know what was. That's hard eyes. Does everyone see that? I keep showing Dalmatians for the hard eyes. <laughs> I just, I just haven't. Okay, showing teeth. Here we go. Here's some fun. There's different ways that, that dogs show teeth, and they have meaning. Now, I don't expect you guys, if there's a dog in an active tooth display with you, to go, hmm, is that a C-shaped pucker? <laughs> because if it's a C-shaped pucker, I really best be moving farther away than if it's a submissive back of the... Okay. <laughs> Move, <laughs> please, just move. But if they if they show their molars, if in the addition, I can't do it like they can. If you can see their molars, it's less of a threat display than when just you know the the dangerous dog signs. Where it's got the front, it's just the incisor showing front, the front, top and bottom. That's much more of a threat display. But this C shaped. Is, is a very, like, I'm, I mean business and I'm going to get you if I can, okay? So they have different meanings. Go ahead. Okay, so this is a C-shaped pucker <laughs> and a whale eye. Um, that is that frontal agonistic pucker. And see the C? That's what you mean. But I don't want you to stop and look for that. <laughs> So usually it escalates from this, this, that, and you learn to view these from all, okay, so that he's not showing molars. Not showing molars. You can see the gums. Oh, Cujo Lassie, okay? I think, it, I think it shows it again. This is our Cujo Lassie dog. So this is, again, this dog, Cujo. Okay, you wouldn't go pet that dog, but in real time, she turns from this, her name was Abby, to that, oh, was it that did it pet me? Waggy tail, soft eyes, open mouth. Okay, this is an agonistic, I mean it, pucker. This is Abby from the top. That's a full frontal lip curl from the top, and when it's from the top, their eyes slant down. So that's how you can tell that they're showing their incisors. This is a little more, I'm gonna show a little more teeth. Now, dogs can also smile. Pause for one second. Do you guys, does anyone have a dog that smiles? Okay, so it's important that we let people know this, but not too much, <laughs> because there aren't that many dogs that smile, but they, they can, and if you have a dog that smiles, I urge you to put it on cue, as this woman did, so that you know that they're smiling, you know, you've got it as a cued, as a trained behavior. <laughs> 
And you notice the rest of the dog was just relaxed, so all you're seeing is that. There's Mikey. Hey, Mikey, he likes it. This dog was territorial of the car. <clears throat> There's a C shape again. Yep, the tail was wagging. Good, but the tail was wagging the whole time. We don't want to look at, at tails. <laughs> now this, you can see it's not coming up as high and you're starting to see more teeth. If I had a better angle of it, you'd probably see that you're seeing some molar. Um, ears alert and forward. Okay, so the opposite of the bunny ears. so that shepherd's ears are turned forward. This is a floppy-eared dog, sort of half floppy, half prick. This is my juvenile delinquent Casper with his ears turned forward, and he does bite. So don't come near him. <laughs> tense, uh, tense body or face, it's, it's, sti it's stiffness. Them, um, in a different way than little movement, okay, because they're, they're usually intent on something. dog is not relaxed. Do you see the tenseness in the face? Now there's lip licking going on. So the dog is conflicted about what to do. This cocker just hated me. <laughs> height and posture and height seeking. Pa this is really an important one because so many dogs do this and it is so significant as as a distance increasing signal. They want to gain social distance. They want to gain stat. They're status seeking dogs generally. I try to get away from the labels of dominance and submission being bad or good things because it takes dominant and submissive dogs to make the world go around and it takes dominant and submissive people. If we were all dominant, it would be a really, really dangerous place to live. If we were all submissive, nothing would ever get done. Okay? So, um, so, you know, it's like when they say opposite, it's attract and all that. I mean, you need different personality types. So don't, if I say, you know, this is a very dominant behavior, it doesn't mean that I'm saying this is a very bad dog. Because a very submissive dog is just as likely to bite you as a very dominant dog. Okay? You, it, you don't, it's the extremes will bite you either way, I mean, or have the, the equal potential to bite you. Um, a dog that's a little bit more dominant is more likely to push and have certain kinds of problems, and a dog that's a little more submissive and soft is likely to have different kinds of problems, okay? And so you want to know what their personality type is. If I'm working with you, you know, and we have to work together closely, I want to know what your personality type is and, and, so that we, and you want to know mine so we can sort of adjust ourselves and, and work together well. Because if we're both type A, you know, and we stay that way and we're unable to adjust our personality at all, we're not going to go along well. <laughs> okay. So heightened posture is very important and people tend to blow this off and they say it's play. Oh, he's playing. He's playing. This one. He's playing. That's what they told me. Playing? He's playing. So the, the girl that had handled him and swore it was play came in and let him play with her. And I'm like, he's not playing. And she's like, look, yeah, look, he's playing. He's just mouthy. He's playing. Let's look, I can, she can grab his paw. He's all tangled up. He's got her whole arm in his mouth. Um, and he's just up and up and up and grab and up. This is, this is when we were dog testing Abby with that other dog who was height seeking. Okay, so that was actually what we call a muzzle punch. Muzzle punches happen very fast. The dog goes boom. And they come up and they hit you generally in the nose where it hurts the worst with a closed mouth. Has anybody ever had this happen to them? It hurts badly. So I'm petting, 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 boom, she went right from my face, okay, and then she came back down from my arm. Um, and so she did, you'll see with this dog, because I keep it going, that she doesn't just stop height-seeking, okay, she did it again. And I was like, oh, I hate this dog. And then we're doing sitting, and again, she's trying to get up on me. She's trying to get in my space, she does a shake-off, she kind of goes away, comes back, and I'm like, oh. 
I'm so happy about this dog. And she gets right back up on my space and she's got my arm in her mouth. This is a, a bulldog, height seeking. This is in a kennel. And there's some teeth. <laughs> I want you to go away. I didn't go away. I got the teeth. That's part of what you were saying. You know, well, how come? You're letting them win. Well, you know, behind a kennel, sure, but <laughs> then they escalate. If there wasn't a kennel there, I would have gotten bitten. Lowered head and neck, very important. Um, and go ahead. It's, it's a, this is a sign that is really almost exclusively specific to the fact that the dog is probably a resource guarder. So this is one of those where you can go, I see this position, I think the problem is going to be resource guarding, which is one of the things we're going to talk about this afternoon, quite a bit about resource guarding because it's so common in dogs. But they will lower their head and neck lower than, their bot than the rest of their body. Um, understand, resources to a dog are not food and water and pig ears or, or kongs or whatever. Space is a resource. You are a resource. Maybe, maybe. Okay, people can be a resource. Um, location can be a resource. Grass can be a resource. Um, I had a Dalmatian Rescue brought to me a dog that guarded everything. Every toy, water, food, grass, um, sticks, rocks, anything environmentally. He, 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 there was, you know, and the more things a dog guards, the worse the prognosis is because you have to work with every single little thing one at a time. But resource guarding is very common because it's a, natural, it's a natural behavior and so there's a lot of stuff to do with that. But they may be doing the lowered head and neck over what looks like nothing, but there's an ant there, okay? They could be an ant guarder. I mean, seriously, they can guard anything. It's, what, it's whatever they determine is worth guarding to a resource guarder, okay? Go ahead. So if you see that position, you, you know there's probably resource guarding going on. Oh, we'll see how the volume is. Now this is something, Roborad is something this dog has never seen before. And the dog is doing this excessive barking, which is, um, can you pause for one second, is, is go away, go away, go away. This kind of barking, this whoo, 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 it's fast and low, is go away, go away, go away, go away, go away. It's distance increasing barking. There is that friendly greeting barking, you know, that like, oh, God, shut up, you know. <laughs> And then there is my favorite, that one of my dogs does so well, the alarm bark. <laughs> um, and, and, oh, God. Um, so, I mean, there are many, many different kinds of barks, but this, this fast, low, sharp, woo, 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 is, is a go away, go away, distance increasing, attempt to gain social distance, bark. They want you to back up. I'm going away. I'm going away. That's my Casper. <laughs> Anybody want him? 